Hello, welcome back. You are <clears throat> at the channel How to RPG, and we're going to be talking about the secrets to fantastic locations and how to make your own. Before you, you see a few books, but that's beside the point because what I want you to do is I want you to grab some food, some drink, get comfortable, get ready because we're going to go on a ride. I'm going to give you the information you require. I'm going to put up a poll. Feel free to take part in that poll if you want to. And I really want you to give me some feedback too because this is a live stream and, and during a live stream, there is an expectation that you actually communicate. So how's it going, um, Fred Hubbard? How's it going, Derp? <coughs> and uh, we'll see how well my uh, my voice holds out. <laughs> Here we go. Let's uh, let's make this happen, shall we? Okay. <coughs> Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about role playing games and specifically this is Game Master Preparation, The Secrets to Creating Fantastic Locations. This is Lesson 4, I've run this program before. This is slightly similar to what I've done in the past, there are some variations on it, but let's go over what we're going to do and um, give you today. Okay, so the overview, inspiration for creating your, your locations and how to create your locations, the location details and information that you need to come up with, the specific location layouts. So instead of giving you a specific location layout, I'm going to give you sort of like how do we apply these concepts to a fantasy uh setting but how do I apply it to a science fiction setting if you're running a science fiction game and I always like to give out some miscellaneous recommendations as well so I'm going to do that my objectives I was going to explain how to build your adventure location for you for your role-playing game demonstrate the process and allow you some practice so we're going to build some tools today so there's going to be some stuff going on okay let's get straight into it inspiration for creating your locations where can you get that from? Well, real world locations and real world architecture, very useful. Real landmarks. You'll be surprised that you can find many images of historical buildings and structures and areas that with just a, a little bit of modification can be incorporated into your adventure as a location. Uh, books and movies offer many landscapes and places that are quite exotic so you can util utilize them. If you're into video games, video games, particularly if they have a, an RPG or a role-playing game experience, they usually have dynamic environments that you can explore. So you could you repurpose those for your own tabletop role-playing game. Then there's also pictures, paintings, and landscape artwork done in oil, acrylic, and watercolor. And these give you lots of different ideas uh, for the kinds of things that you might want to incorporate in your game. And now. If we go to pre-made role-playing game published adventures, you're going to find plenty of locations that have been come up by somebody else has developed and maps to go with them as well. So you can repurpose those. And then if you're and the sort of person who trawls the internet, you could use Google search, Pinterest, ArtStation, DeviantArt to find images of locations that you want to re you know, want to incorporate into your adventure. So when it comes to coming up with ideas, there's lots of different places. And surprisingly, I know that there are a few people out there who can come up with an idea by listening to music. And if you're the one of those people, well done. I am not one of those people, but if you can do it, well done. Okay, how do you create your location? You want a fantastic location. So again, I'm going to refer you back to using start with real world architecture, use plans of buildings, use the layout uh, that has been provided from diagrams, uh, the deck plan of a ship, floor plans of buildings and ruins. There's plenty of them on the internet. There's plenty of them in books. You can also check out Sly Flourish's fantastic locations and his preparation method. Now, without going and reading that book and reading all the information he's got there, you can boil it down to this. You're going to make it old, make it large, give it unique features, give it a, make it functional, and give it an interesting name. And that's fine for a fantasy location. But what if you're playing in a science fiction uh, world where you're in the future? Well, you're not going to make it old. You might, in fact, go the in complete opposite direction. You're going to make it very new. This is the first one of its kind, okay? Even in this advanced society. You're still going to make it large. You're going to give it unique features. You're going to give it a function, and you're going to give it an interesting name. 
and that is the only difference you need to do in terms of going from a fantasy setting that's sort of in the past to a science fiction setting. That simple change is all you need to do. Focus on making the location reusable as a set piece. This really helps you for future preparation. Many of the locations that you're going to use are going to repeat. So things like villages, towns and cities, castles and strongholds tend to have the same sort of structure, although castles historically have been very different. Tombs, pyramids, uh, mazes will obviously have different structures to them, but the concept behind them is essentially the same. The temple, shrine, a mine, you've got the same sort of uh, general structure, a cave system, a monster lair, your death trap dungeon, your treasure vault, and your sailing ship. All of these very, very similar in their structure, or conceptually in their structure. And sure, the location is interactive for your player characters because it's, it's the tool for one of the pillars of play. And if you're going to play any kind of role-playing game, exploring the location is really important. This is why we have the location in the first place. It's not just a set piece. You're not dealing with a matte painting. Draw a picture with digital tools, or you could use paper and pencil or pen. And, uh, you know, you can, you can trace it from somebody else's work and make some alterations. Change what you need to, or change what you want to for your adventure. Okay, and then label it. So... Whether you like it or not, when it comes to locations, there is probably, no, no matter whether you use software or whether you use a pen or a pencil, at some point, drawing is going to be required. And if you're not going to draw it, you're going to have to repurpose somebody else's work. But if you're making your own stuff, make sure you label your map as well. Okay, so you know just at least the name of the location. Okay, possibly some directions so you know where north, south, and west is. And then if there's a couple of different locations or rooms within this um, map, uh, or even different areas, then you maybe you want to, to label them, number them in some way. Okay, now there are plenty of different resources out there that you can use. I'm going to suggest you might want to check out something like the Game Master's, um, the Game Master's Book of Random Encounters. It has many locations in that. Uh, Pathfinder's Role Playing Game Game Mastery Guide for First Ed Edition. Got a lot of information. Wally DM's Journal of Puzzle Encounters provides you with many different rooms like there's a hundred different rooms in there plus a whole lot of interactive puzzles the dungeon master's guide for first ed edition advanced dungeons and dragons okay first ed edition it's got a lot of tools in there uh, you'll find quite a bit of stuff uh, floating around in the 5e dungeon master guide as well because it seems to be built very much on the first um, advanced dungeons and dragons dungeon master guide and there are of course going to be other books out there that can do uh, do the sort of work you need okay now that we've covered that aspect, we're not finished. There's still more to be done. Location, details, and information. These are the questions you need to ask yourself. So when you ask these questions, you're going to have to have an answer for them. Do you have to have an answer straight away? Not necessarily. But start with these. Who created the location? So you have to figure out who created the location in the first place. Was it a god? Was it manufactured by a wizard? Was it an architect of some kind? So you decide what it is. Is it the mighty giants? What is the purpose of the location? What is the purpose of this location, whoever built it? It may have changed in purpose over time. The purpose now might be different, but you still have to figure out what the purpose of the location is. What is the history of the location? And why is the location important? Now when I say history, the only time we need to look at history of a location is when there's something important about that history. <laughs> okay, If the history is so bland, maybe we don't need to deal with that at all. I mean, you don't need to worry about dealing with the history of a hill if really the formation of those hills was really not a big issue. Like, they, they, they're there. You know, nothing special happened. So there's no history to tell. But, if the location is very important, there may be some history to it that is important, so answer that question. Who inhabits the location? And maybe in the past, but also right now. The general population of a location. Who are the dominant species, or what? who are the dominant species or races in there? Position your hazards, your obstacles in the location. Now this can be traps, puzzles, natural hazards. Check out what you think you're going to need. Now, there are lots of different ways of doing this. There are plenty of books. I've just rattled off a whole bunch of them that can do this for you. Environmental 
dressing like what is the environmental dressing for the location what sort of objects will you find there what sort of furniture will you find there add in features to the location with aspects that can again be interacted with and manipulated so that the exploration aspect of that location is the focus remember the location is not just a map painting and a backdrop it is part of the game It's the thing that you want them to be able to explore and interact with so make sure that that there is going to be something like that going on now every time I run this program I always like to give some miscellaneous recommendations and so I'm going to do that right now the first thing I would like to say is you don't have to be good at drawing a location map because you're not going to be selling it unless of course you're doing this for a business and if that is the case then you come to the wrong place because I'm not a professional um, map drawer okay you want somebody who's good at that sort of thing and I, I am just a normal mosho when it comes to that sort of stuff. You need to find a specialist for that sort of thing. But if it's just for yourself, you know, it's always good to at least, even if you're not very good at it, to at least practice doing it. You don't have to spend a lot of time on it, but I'll at least have it a, give it a go. But you don't have to be good at drawing a location map. You just need to be able to do it. <laughs> That's it. It's not necessary to use or learn map making or map drawing software because there are alternative methods. Again, you can repurpose somebody else's stuff by tracing and making alterations. You can completely copy somebody else's stuff. You could just use somebody else's stuff or you could just draw it yourself with a pen and a pencil on paper. So there are alternatives. So many different maps are available in the fantasy um, uh, genre so in terms of fantasy locations you can still borrow okay existing maps to your heart's content so there should never be an issue about coming up with a location again like anything you can repurpose it and don't be hard on yourself about how good or bad things are and i'm not talking about the map map side of things i mean in terms of the location locations are like lollies you eat a lolly, you either like it or you don't, and you eat a different lolly later on. Okay? They come and go. They're not always going to be there. And you also have the chance and opportunity to improve on them because you can repurpose them later on and make alterations for your next adventure or next campaign. Now, I'm hoping that this was useful to you, and if it was, fantastic. I want to thank my patrons for supporting me so I can keep running this program for you. And I want to thank you for watching and paying attention. Hopefully there was something here that was useful to you that you will be able to draw on. And we are going to very, very shortly go into the process of making some stuff with you right now. So thank you for being here. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Okay, <clears throat> we're done. For those of you who are very new, um, hopefully that was useful to you or helpful in some way. For those of you who have seen this presentation before, there's been some slight adjustments, not a huge amount of adjustment, but a little bit. We're going to get on to the process of actually doing some stuff today. So I'm going to answer your questions in the chat. So far away with your questions. And um, somebody has just started asking me about digital tools. I'm going to fire a lot of links into the digital. Uh, uh, you asked for that, so we're going to give you them. Now, a lot of the stuff, so what I just talked about, the notes for that and all the resources are in a, a PDF, on a PDF on Patreon. So my Patreon actually has all of these. Like I do um, eight different programs for game master preparation. Okay, They cover the, the, the basics of all the things you would normally have to build yourself. And it's all available on um, on Patreon. You can download those for as little as a dollar a month. You don't have to pay very much. Okay, it's it's pretty cheap. Um, we're not going to do rumors today. We will come back to rumors. Um, Derp. We're going to. We've been working on another tool, and I'm gonna we're going to start on it very very shortly. And that is. Um, wilderness locations 100 different wilderness locations so every type of environmental wilderness location that you can imagine we've made a list we almost there we're almost finished we're going to finish that today but it's not just what it is it's a description as well so this table is quite involved and it's taken a lot of work to put together so we're going to we're going to work on that but let's we have a question here from somebody who I don't recognize uh, 
is it ma ma is it Michan Michanatu? What digital tools can I use to make a map? So I'm going to give you um, I'm going to give you Nata Michanata. I'm going to give you a bunch of links in the live stream since you're here. Um, we will drop in as many links as I possibly can. I will talk very briefly about them, and then we're going to get straight into the the hard work of actually finishing off this rather large table we've started, uh, which should be very very useful. So the first one, this is very simple. It is free. You do not need to pay for it. It will not cost you anything. And uh, this is called Dungeon Scroll. How's it going? Prepare, cook, and survive. Paste this. This is Dungeon Scroll. The link is going in now. My suggestion is start with this. Very, very simple program. This is where you want to start when it comes to using software. Oh, near complete it. Complete, complete. Yes, yes. So without a copy, you're going to duplicate some. Um, we're going to duplicate some. Um, no, no, we we have no duplications in that table. I've I've been checking, I've been paying attention. I have done a little bit of work outside of that. So let me just grab the next link uh, for the next lot of software. So this here is called Fantasy Map Generator. Fantasy Map Generator. I'm not going to go over or show you how to use all these things. It is really a generator. You press a few buttons and it creates the map for you. Okay, so it's a little bit of artificial intelligence, a little bit of software program going on there. So this is Fantasy Map Generator. This is the link for that one. And then, um, now I have other resources here, but I'm not going to, since people only asked about maps, we'll just stick with that. If you're wanting something like a medieval fantasy city generator, well, there is a generator that will allow you to do that as well. And so if you, I know one of the pet peeves people have is trying to come up with a city quickly. And I see a lot of uh, videos out there about how to do that. Well, this will do it for you. Will it do a really good job? Probably not because it's again, a, um, it's going to have limitations because it's software. And it, you don't have that kind, you know, that you don't have perfect control. Now the next one, now Dungeon Fog, uh, approached me many years ago before they became very well known but Dungeon Fog um, is another software package I am not suggesting you go there but I'm at least putting it out there okay um, you may have heard of this one Encarta Incarnate uh, Incarnate that's right Incarnate not Encarta Encarta there we go I will drop that link in there as well this this is a very complicated piece of software. This will take a lot of time to actually get something done if you're going to use that. Um, global product and gaming review. How do I use a bard NPC to enhance, give flavor to the storyline? Oh, okay, I see. Well, it's very easy. All NPCs, all non-player characters, they are avenues for presenting information, are they not? And what bards do... You know, traditionally, if you look at the bard, uh, medieval, you know, the medieval bard, rather than the fantasy bard that we use in play role-playing games, is they would travel around. Um, so, Nutter, I'm not quite finished. There's still a few more links to come. So, just hang around and I'll drop the rest in. I'll just answer this question. Um, so, the, the, I guess the first thing to, to, to note is, like, because an NPC or a... Um, a non-player character is a, a vehicle for presenting information to our player characters. A bard is perfect because what a bard did was that they carried the news. They carried the news from one location or one town or city to another. And they would travel around. They were traveling bards. They were real bards. You know, they were actual bards. And so it's perfect. Your NPC can, can give, um, you know, they would give out uh, information in, in poet form uh, in poem form in terms of the news, events, current events. Um, it might be mythology, it can be legend, it might be simply a song. So it's it's very simple. You just need to have them show up and they will, they would travel around. So you might meet them on the road. So it's not difficult. Um, they are the perfect, the, the bard NPC is the perfect NPC for presenting your players with information. And... Um, and in terms of giving flavor to your storyline, well, they're going to drop all of those hints and tips about, you know, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a secret island that needs to be found with a, a mighty treasure 
to be discovered. Like that, 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 this is your, this is potentially your Bard NPC can be the, the, um, the quest giver in many cases, but in a more roundabout way in that they're not paying anybody. They're just giving them information. Now they have to decide, do they want to go off on that adventure? So yeah, that's, that's what I would say with that. Okay. Now let me just continue. I was the last one um, incarnate. Uh, let's grab the next one. Oh, now if you want to build an entire world, uh, like a, a sandbox world, hex roll. Hex roll is very useful. It press, you, you have a few things that you can control and it just spits out a world and it gives you all the information on that world. Now it is designed for AD&D or Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, but if you ignore all the, the, the monster math stuff, then you just port over whatever you want. Everything else will work because it will give you locations, NPCs, uh, it gives you all the stuff that you would normally have to build. So if you want to build a campaign world, sort of a microcosm of it, you can do that very quickly. And it, it gives you factions, it gives you a lot of different things. You're going to find hex roll very useful as a tool. Uh, and it gives you a sort of like a map, it's like a working map. Now the next one is Don John. Don John has the ability to create a world for you. You can also create locations for your adventures. Will it literally create an adventure for you? It's it's the early, I guess you would say, it's early AI um, creating stuff. Whereas now we, we talk about chat GPT, or GP, yeah, chat GPT. Well, Dungeon uh, Donjon was been around a lot longer than that, and it's been doing that for many, many years. And it will draw it out for you as well. So you actually get a map with it, you get all the locations, what the monsters will be, stuff, stuff like that. Pro Fantasy... <clears throat> Pro Fantasy is another tool. I don't remember quite so much about this one. Um, I didn't play around with this as much as some of the other ones. I've probably played around with Donjon and um, Dungeon Scroll probably more than any other. So I'll drop this one in here as well. So you're welcome to go and check that out. Now, if you want them already done, you don't want to have to worry about, you know, doing random generated maps. You don't want to have to try and draw it yourself. You just want somebody who just has a great huge library. Well, guess what? Um, Dyson Logos. Dyson Logos has lots of free black and white maps in his style that you can go and download. Okay. Now you can also become part of his Patreon and he'll give you a bunch more. <laughs> okay. But if you want them free, there there is a um, a website for, for grabbing them. If you want to get hold of them, you can. Um, there's also another place. If you want free maps, it's called um, Fantastic Maps. Fantastic Maps is just a great huge um, archive of various maps that people have created and I'll drop this into the link as well uh, yep there you go there's a link for that little sucker <clears throat> and then next um, if you're looking for maps and map making tools or DM resources in that vein and locations well uh, we have the D&D Compendium has, has this very thing so I'm going to give you this link as well these are all the things that you find in, like, when I when I put stuff up, put anything up on Patreon, uh, when there's a tool that I make, because there's a program that I run, there will be included various links that uh, people might want to check out or, or try out and see what they think. Uh, the last one I'm going to give you is um, the D&D Wiki, which has got adventure locations and ideas. So... Because it's got it's just a collection of ideas for locations, you might you might decide well actually I need to I need to sort of brainstorm first. So this isn't going to draw it for you. This is just an idea list in many respects. Okay, so that is that one there. So that's a lot of information very quickly. I uh, do apologize. I, I um, I'm sort of glossing over everything and not going into a lot of detail, but when you see the title of this video. It looks very clickbaity, because I, frankly I think it is. But here's the thing, here's the secret to creating a fantastic location. You make it based off reality. You might think that that seems ridiculous, because, you know, real world stuff is not that interesting. Well, that's not true, because historically, you know, humans have made some amazing structures. Absolutely amazing. They may not exist anymore. In its time, the Colosseum in Rome was an amazing structure. The, minute, the way they formed it, they used to fill that thing with water and have sea, sea battles in the thing, in the Colosseum. 
How did they do that? Well, they did. It did happen. Uh, there have been structures and um, statues that are an incredibly tall and large uh, based on various um, Greek gods that don't no longer exist now. Uh, one of my favorites is the Pink Terraces, which was actually formed by nature. It's an amazing thing. You th when you see the pictures of it, it's absolutely amazing. It's gone now because it was destroyed by a volcano. So basing your stuff on real world or previous previously real world locations is actually a really good technique because it only requires you to make a few slight changes and it becomes a little bit more fantastical than it was before. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> All right, so let's get on with doing some work because that's why people are here is to actually get some work done. And I've said that um, we have 100 wilderness locations. It's almost ready to go. And now the idea behind this list is you use an adjective. So maybe it's the screaming, um, the screaming banshee mountains. And mountains is the, the, the thing that we're dealing with, okay? So you kind of get an idea of just what we're dealing with there. In a second, I'll show you. Just give me a moment. I'm just going to shut down a couple of things and I should be ready to go. Uh, yes. Cool. I'll just get my phone up and ready. This is great. I have one question. Okay. A friend of mine uses Dungeon Alchemist. Have you used it? And if so, uh, do you like it? Well, no, I've never used it before. Never, never heard of, uh, I don't think I've been approached by them. Have I? So I get approached by a lot of people and I usually turn most of them down. Um, why is this? It's because usually the requirements for me doing something with their, 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 their product on my channel is more to their benefit than it is to mine. And um, I don't often see that there's a huge benefit to everybody else, uh, frankly, because they're, they're just breaking into the market and uh, they're an untested product as far as I'm concerned. So I don't generally say, yeah, let's go do this. Let's have a look at what uh, you were talking about here. Uh, so this is AI fantasy game map making software. Okay, so I found I found the website. Let's um, let's share my screen. Let's have go have a look at this thing very briefly, and see what um, see what we've got here. But I've never used it. If you were wondering, I've never used it. I have no idea what it's like. But I'm happy to have a quick peek at it while uh, while we're here. So let's do that. And I will pull up my chat to make sure I can see what you guys are saying. Uh, okay. All right, there we go. Let's have a look. I've got my phone going. That's good. Cool. So buy on Steam out now. So this is this looks like a pay to use sort of thing. So you you don't you don't have a free version, I suspect that you can try out. How does it work? Print digital. Okay. So this looks like Dungeon Fog. Um, okay, actually, I think I've seen some adverts for um, this Alchemist thing. Yeah, it's a three-dimensional um, map making um, tool. So you get a two-dimensional two look, but you can also make it three-dimensional. Um, oh, look, it's the way of the future. I'm sure we're going to have more and more of this sort of stuff coming out. I, I, I don't know what to say um, other than it exists. It exists. Is it any good? Honestly, I have no idea. It's really going to be up to you to just sort of decide by by trying it out. Maybe it's better to wait until somebody else, you know, maybe you go find somebody, if you've got a friend who's using it, maybe you try it out with, on their computer first before you decide to go and purchase a thing like this because that, um, that certainly looks like it's going to be a bit pricey too, I suspect. But I don't know for sure. Anyway, so we've seen it. Um, I am going to just... I'm just going to take this link and make it a, um, this will be a task for me to go and check out at some point, or at least go and ask somebody who might have used it. Um, so I'm going to copy the link, and we'll come back to this some other time, and see what we have. All right, cool. All right, so this is, that's done, this is done. Let's um, let's share my screen so you can see what we've been working on. This is what we've been working on, people. This is wilderness locations. 
which you might be thinking, well, gosh, I remember this. We've been working on this forever. Well, we were very, very close to being done. Okay. Uh, I've tried to make sure it's all in alphabetical order. You can see what we, how we structured it is like, you know, um, archipelago is, and then we give a description of what an archipelago is. Uh, and so you're going to use this to help build out your locations. And so we've come up with everything we could possibly find. There's a, I mean, we, we still got a few gaps and I will fill them in today. Um, but the list is pretty extensive now. I think we have almost completed it. I don't think I've seen anybody so far in a publication do anything like this. And we are at a point where we are, we're down to having the last say three or four locations that we need to sort of build out. So I'm going to suggest you, this is an opportunity for you to help fill in the gaps. Throw out something that you think we might be able to include. Um, and I'll see if we've already got on the list. Might want to consider some environmental or wilderness um, environments that are fantastical or should I say fantasy based. So I put down mushroom forest because I thought mushroom forest is something that's a bit more um, fan, you know, fantasy driven rather than a normal forest with trees. So, hashtag, uh, what are some wilderness locations we don't have? Okay, and I am going to work my way through here, uh, filling in these details and then placing them where I think they need to go. And I had written down waterhole uh, just um, not so long ago because I realized we didn't have waterhole. So define waterhole. Okay, it's a depression in which water collects, especially on that of a regular drink. Uh, yes, so. This is essentially what we're trying to compress. We'll take this definition. Um, and we'll place it in here and I'll put it into alphabetical order. Take up formatting. Okay. Uh, a, a depression. A, a depression in the, the ground which collects which water which collects water water and um, that's probably all we need to have for that and we're all good So the watering hole is your sort of your regular point of call for uh, animals to come and drink. And um, yeah, quite a common thing for if you're dealing with um, like Australia would have quite a few watering holes to small pockets of water. Then it's not a lake. It's not really a river or a stream. It's just a, a pool of water that's formed. Um, Africa, there's quite a few of them as well. And I'm sure other places around the world have them as well. So let's put in a watering hole. And I will grab this and put it into alphabetical order. Cut. Uh, watering, watering, watering. Waterhole. Um, I think it's going to be after that one, isn't it? Now, you, you might be thinking, what is, the, what is the point of doing something like this? You'd be surprised how useful it can be. Um, I've seen somebody who had already done something like this, like um, Paizo. Uh, Pathfinder had uh, a game mastery book, but they did not have 100. They had about 50. So it's not quite as many as this one has. <clears throat> and then uh, next. Oh, I wanted to do, I wanted to go through the ones that were near the front that I had missed. Okay, so eh, abyss. So if we do define abyss, define abyss, so we get a good definition. The abyss. Uh, 
delete and paste. And we'll hit the return. Okay, that's good. <clears throat> Next, um, a deep or seemingly bottomless chasm. A wide or profoundly um, um, profound difference between people and gulf? No. The regions of hell conceived as a bottomless pit. Abyss or region of hell. So I think that's what we're going to be dealing with here. Okay, all right, let's 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 deal with this. A bottomless pit or chasm. To the unknown. Uh, sometimes hell. Whoops, wrong one. There we go over here. Um, sometimes a region of hell, sometimes a region of hell. Okay, so that's abyss. We've got that marked down. Okay, so what do we got here? Um, my, my phone did not catch up with the chat people, so I apologize for that. Um, we'll just catch up now. Hunter Murphy Law. All right, the hat's going off. Let's get to work. Ah, okay, Hunter Murphy Law. What do you got here? Uh, oh, what do you got here, Fred? Different people like different map-making tools. Some will swear by a tool when others swear it. When another swears at it. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, you got to figure out what's going to work for you. So if you're not really familiar with using map-making software, start with the free stuff and just see what you can sort of get a feel for. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that. So Hunter Murphy Law, I've started using um, AI art creations to do small battle maps. Okay, all right. Meadow of Feywild. Oh, well, I think we've got the word meadow down already, but let me just check, Fred. We might not. I mean, I'm not going to put down Feywild because that's sort of like an extension. Um, but the word meadow... Yeah, no, we've got Meadow included. So, and Meadow is actually on the list. Okay. A giant hollow tree, a tree stump. A giant hollow tree, tree stump. Okay, burrows. Burrows down hills, graves, tombs, moles. Okay, uh, bridge across. Okay, well, a bridge is... I think what you're talking about when you say bridge, you're talking about the stone bridge, aren't you? You're talking about the naturally formed stone bridge. And they're very rare, but they do occasionally occur. That's a good point. I'm not talking about a rope bridge because it's not like a naturally forming location. This is wilderness locations. So they naturally form. They're not something that's constructed. We'll deal with structures later. Yeah, um, but what is there a special name for the naturally forming bridge, stone bridge? Because they do occur very rarely, but they do crop up. So um, I think what I'll do is I'm going to just scroll down here and just put down um, natural stone bridge. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's a special name for it. There may be, maybe there is. Okay. Okay, let's go back. So we've uh, tidied up Abyss. Bluff. Well, we definitely need to put Bluff in there and finish that off. So we'll we'll take Bluff and and get ourselves a good definition. You might be wondering why I've got these descriptions because some of you will know what these things are because not everybody does. And so I'm trying to do some of the work for you so you don't have to work out how to how to describe it, how to put it into words. It's already done for you, okay? Next, fluff. An attempt to deceive someone into believing, no, that's what we're after. Trying to deceive someone as to one's abilities or intentions. Okay. So bluff 
isn't working for us because I, I know what a bluff is, but this is not quite the, the same bluff we're do, dealing with. Is it spelt differently? Maybe it's spelt differently. Natural stone arch. Okay. Uh, all right, so I'm having trouble with this one. Let's just see natural stone arch. Stone arch. Okay, what is this? Most commonly used distinction between these two geographic features is known is based on how it was formed. Natural rock arches are stone archways. Ah, okay. They have been formed by combination of natural forces such as water and ice. They're called the natural arch. That's what they're called, aren't they? There it is. There it is. That's that's really it. Now, do we have the natural arch already? We probably do, because I know we've had this discussion um, around this sort of thing before. Yes, we've got the natural arch. This is the natural bridge. So we've actually already got it. Tussock, tussock. Uh, that's not right. That's not spelt right. So we've, we've actually got the natural bridge already. So the natural bridge has been done. Not so easy. But uh, it's good to know that, um, I mean, at least we're not as far off as you might think. Can these be underwater? Yes, they could, it could be, it could be, um, it could be a, it could be underwater, it could be on land, um, it could be something in the sky, it could be, I guess it could be extra planar, but we're dealing with not a structure that's been built, but something that's naturally formed. Does that make sense? Balancing rock. I think we had that already. I remember that's when you have one rock here and another one that forms a T and it's balancing. I believe that we actually found that before. It's not the Widowmaker. Uh, it's something else. I'm sure we've had that already. Because we've had a bunch of people in here who had a lot uh, lot of knowledge in that, that area and um, I, I learned a lot about <laughs> environmental hazards. <laughs> that was a pretty bad one. Um, I can't remember what it was called though. I'm I'm sure I've put it in here though, because I, I I distinctly remember it, um, the um, the reference to it. Um, next bluff. So let's let's figure out this bluff. Define bluff. Geo geography. There we go. Let's try that. Okay, here you go. A bluff is, defi is defi um, defined as a steep shoreline slope formed in in segment sediment and are formed in sediment. Loose material such as clay, sand, and gravel. They're three feet or more in vertical elevation just above the high tide line. Okay, so that's what we need to turn our bluff into. All right, well that's good. Now I know what a bluff is. Let's take that. Sand dunes. Now we, we may have sand dunes already. I think it was pretty obvious that one, but we'll check in a second. Let me just drop this in. So um, keep keep a thinking. You'd be surprised just how much we, we, we got down. Okay, so a steep uh, shoreline slope formed in sediment. Sediment, uh, formed in sediment, sediment, um, that is, that is higher, sorry, higher than, uh, three, sorry, three feet. And I think that is pretty good. Um, and we're going to make sure we we break out that bit. We don't really need that anymore. Um, and it's going to just need to know the material that is made of clay, sand, and gravel. Do not need a comma if we're going to go and so there we go um 
Okay, so that's the bluff. Right. <clears throat> Sand dunes. Painted desert. Fred, we have got the painted desert. I remember people explaining to me in great detail the painted desert. I can assure you we have the painted desert. Um, that was almost a, a no-brainer. I said painted desert, and they, had to, they actually explained how it was sort of it was. Um, so I've got a, a breakdown of what it is, what it looks like. And as for sand dunes, let's see if we have sand dunes. Okay, we don't have sand. Do we have dunes? Maybe we don't have it. Do we have D for dunes? Well, what do you know? After all of that, we don't actually have sand dunes. Oh, isn't that amazing? <clears throat> I would have thought we, I thought maybe what will have happened if I got distracted, somebody else has said something right, and I just didn't, I just didn't lay it down. I would have thought it would be under dunes or sand. Desert, Dolman, no. And then sand, it's not under sand, so it's it's not there. Well, we'll have to put it in. Oh no, there are sand dunes are here. Yeah, they're sand dunes. Yes, we do have sand dunes. I thought we did. It's just not quite in the right place. So we'll shift it a little bit. <clears throat> we'll cut that. And with sand, it should be sitting roughly about here, shouldn't it? So when I go looking for it, it should be there. So we've actually got sand dunes. <clears throat> geysers. I think you'll find we have geysers. I think we'll have geysers for sure. Getting duplicates. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. we're going to wind up going over. Because, yeah, it's not the same group of people who were doing this with me last time. So there's going to be a lot of people saying the same things we had before. Geyser field. We have the geyser. Yep, that's been explained. Okay, now. The brine pool. Now, I I think I might have made a mistake in here in terms of the, the salt layer. I think the spelling is wrong, but let me just check. <clears throat> That's not what I wanted. Good try. Good try, Fred, but not, not quite. <laughs> uh, let's just close this. This is going to cause problems otherwise. Um, brine pool. Copy. And paste this. Okay, so <clears throat> click on see what floor. What is a brine pool? Um, and we had a few different de definitions, didn't we? Uh, Luna L U A N N. It is. Is that correct? L U A N N. I just want them to get. Yeah, it's correct. The spelling is correct. Okay, fine. That's that done. Next. Moving along here. Moving along here. To make sure if there's no gaps. If, I, if you spot a gap and I haven't filled something out properly, let me know. All right. Extreme desert. I think I left that because I didn't think there was such a thing as an extreme desert. Um, there are different types of deserts, but I don't think that's going to work for us. I don't think there's a thing, an actual environment called extreme desert. Yellowstone mod, mud pots, looking for, what's those, what are those called? Ah, okay. Um, well, we've already got waterfalls. We've already got waterfall, we've already got waterfall. But it does, it does beg the question. Because we're dealing with different terrain types, right? Maybe there is something that we've missed here. Oh, there is. What is an extreme desert? There is, a, there is such a thing. At at least 12 consecutive months without precipitation. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that's, there is such a thing as extreme desert. I did not realize. <laughs> so that's why somebody had said it. I wish that and I receive rainfall or I don't know, for at least the last two. Oh, what? What? They are they are extremely dry, 
and parts of them are thought to not have received any rainfall or other participation for at least the last two million years. Holy sh... Okay. Um, okay, so... It seems like this is the definition here. Okay, so so there is such a thing. I didn't realize there was. Uh, well, now, let's do that. Now, we have, I'm pretty sure we have mud pools already. And mud pools are always, almost always colorful because of the, um, the, the minerals and the, the gases that are coming off it. So, yeah. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> Pale Rider, your suggestion, although we have it, gave me an idea for something else we don't have, I think. I'm just going to note, note it down on a piece of paper so I don't forget. Um, okay. All right. Let's 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 have a look. Let's get this in here. Without formatting. Extremely... Arid lands. Uh, that have at least 12 consecutive months without rainfall. Okay, so it's an actual thing. I didn't realize. So we'll we'll add that in. That uh, that fills that slot. Next, moving through here, we have my, I've I've put in uh, entries for all those giant tree. Now somebody had mentioned giant um, something about a giant tree before, and so we're actually going to add the giant tree in. I do have it marked here as a question mark, so I just do the giant tree. Because there's a few of them, right? Um, um, giant tree. Big tree in American English. <laughs> what do you call a giant tree? Well, the giant redwoods. Yeah, well, the giant redwoods are pretty big too, but there are other trees around the world that are pretty big too. I think some of the tallest ones are definitely that still exist now are the, the giant redwoods of um, North America, correct? So. Um, okay, so uh, let's have a look here. How do we do this? California, these two species are, um, share a distinctive um, cinnamon colored bark. Um, what's the best way to say this? Well, Let's take this description. Take that. I'm going to port that over here. Take out the formatting and then go back. Copy. And we're going to have to change the wording here for this to work. A A gigantic conifer, I'm pretty sure it's conifer tree, with red bluish brown bark, scale like blue green leaves. And bearing large 
elliptical cones. Bam. There we go. Now, um, I believe, did you say gravity spots are actually an optical illusion due to the change in the grade of the road? Very interesting when it occurs. So gravity spots, I was waiting for somebody to mention something about that because um, it actually was percolating through my mind. So um, gravity spot. So we'll come back to gravity spot. The kelp forest, I think we've got the kelp forest already, but I want to check in a second to make sure we do. I can assure you it is not an illusion. <laughs> um, okay, what else we got here? The crystalline tree type um, um, growth that um, draw moisture from deep, deep earth and deserts. Crystalline tree. Okay, hang on. Let me see. This grass desert, the result of a massive thermonuclear detonation close above um, close above sea um, again, clo close above sand large fragments of glass scatter all over the affected area oh glass desert oh I know what you're talking about because isn't a glass desert also you can get a glass desert if there's a lot of lightning strikes um, because the lightning heats up the the, 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 the silicon and the and that you know the sand the silicon and actually causes glass to occur um so i'm going to check on kelp forest in a second but let me just give me, give me a second i'm catching up people going for a shower no way worry um pale rider do that absolutely I, i'm not going to pause the show just yet we're at the top of the hour almost but not quite um now K for kelp. Kelp forest is in. So you don't have to worry about kelp forest. We've already got it dirt. It is there. Um, next. By me, we have a strange phenomena called the gravity spot. It's called Hangman's Hill. It forces a car to naturally roll uphill. Oh, okay. So let's let me just get this this other one. The the crystal crystalline tree um, magnetic hills 10 magnetic hill gravity roads and mystery spots okay I, I believe we have reef I have, have I think we've got coral reef as the uh, the markdown uh, but let's let me check in a second um, a magnetic hill Let me just check. I'm pretty sure we do have coral reef. Coral reef is there. Do we have just... There's, you can have just a reef as well. We do have reef. Okay, so we had rapids. Um, I might just call that river rapids. That might be... Uh, no rapids. Rapids. I mean, do we have to say river rapids or rapids? No, I think rapids is good enough. So we've, we've done that one. I don't need to worry about that. Okay, I, I thought we might have missed that one, but we haven't. Okay, so going back, let's just make sure I've got all these things filled in correctly. Extreme Desert, we've just done that one. Um, the Fairy Rings, we've got there. I've got that down, just under the giant tree. Um, hill, Hot Springs, Island. Yes, we've got Island, good. Jungle. Um, why am I having... Trouble of tussock grass. It's probably because it's not spelt like copy. Tussock grass. Tussock. Oh, it's because it isn't spelt right. That's why. <laughs> it's tussock. As in that, which we have a lot in New Zealand. A lot of tussock grass. Um, T U S S sock. Tussock grass that is infertile. Infertile tussock grass. Okay, that's the more. Next, the ocean trench, I believe we have. Beaver dam. It's constructed. I know where you're going with this, um, um, Nutter. I, I do get it. Um, and I know it's, it's not constructed by a man or women. It is constructed by an animal. 
So do we do we do we do we say we're going to include that as well? So yeah, I'll, I'll, well let me think about that for a little bit. Um, fossilized? Why have I got fossilized? No, we're not American English. Um, I I I know in the past I would have done all this in American English, but it's driving me nuts, people. I am starting to lose my mind, so I, I can't do it anymore. Um, <laughs> it's just, I start to I start having trouble pronouncing and um, and spelling stuff. It actually gets very confusing. Um, planes. So this is the Ocean Trench. Ocean Trench. Ocean Trench. Um, a lot, a long narrow ditch. A huh, okay. A long narrow uh, topographical depression in the ocean floor. They are typically fifty to a hundred kilometers wide. Uh, but it can be thousands of kilometers in length. So. Um, well, I think that there, I think that there is probably where we want to be. So, Ocean Trench. We might just expand that just a little bit. A long narrow depression. Narrow deep depression in the ocean bed. Um, uh, Running parallel to the to a plate boundary. Okay. I think we'll just relate. I'll replace it with that. How to co throw a curveball? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you've been to eight of these locations, really? Oh my. Okay. Well, that's something. Okay, so let's see. Um, planes, I'm going to tidy up planes in a second. So I'm just going to mark that with my marker. It's top of the hour, so I normally take a break for about five minutes or less and then come back. And we will continue. And we're, we're, we're getting there. I mean, we, it looks like we're, we need three more. I think I can fill out these all right. So that's not going to take too long. I, I think that's pretty, we're, I'm pretty sure we, we will definitely finish it today. But... Anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to go take a break, come back, and uh, we'll continue. Uh, Arnold will look after you for five minutes or less. I just need to go and use a toilet.
Here we go. Stepping back in. Uh, I believe we did have mangroves, but I will check, okay? I'm pretty sure we did have mangroves. Um, let me just zip this back over. So I'm going to come back to this mark. This is where I sort of stopped. And uh, a few ideas had been put forward that I have not included yet. So what I want to do is I want to include them in here and then build them out. Um, and I think we might have enough. So let's see what a gravity... Let's type in gravity spot. Um, define... Gravity spot. Is it a gravity spot? What do we got here? Oh, it's a gra it's, so it's also called a gravity hill. A gravity hill, also known as a mag magnetic hill, a mysterious. M Mystery Hill, Mystery Spot, Gravity Road, or Anti-Gravity Hill. It's a place where the... Oh, right, okay, interesting. Um, okay, so a Gravity Hill. And there's a Magnetic Hill, Mystery Hill, and I respond to Gravity Hill is a place where the layout of the surrounding land uh, produces an optical illusion making a, making a slightly downhill slope appear to be an uphill slope okay all right well, that is odd um Thus, a car left out of gear will appear to be rolling uphill against gravity. Oh, okay. So, is it, it's an opt? It is an optical illusion. The gravity hill. Um. Well. Let us let us do this. Let us see if we can redefine it and just chop it down a bit. Since that's what we've got here, so let's try this. Um, gravity hill. So. Okay. Um. So we need to shorten this down a little bit, so it's a little bit more cleaner. Yes, yes it can. Yes it can. Derp, it, that's exactly the point. This is why I'm putting it down. <laughs> uh, and somebody else has written down this, so... Mangrove. Root maze. I think I've got mangroves or estuary already, but uh, yeah, we'll come back to that. Okay, let's just see if we can restructure this a little bit. Okay. If I shorten this. The surrounding um, land produces an optical illusion making a slightly, uh, making a slight downhill slope appear to be an uphill slope. Okay, that'll do. That's pretty. That's pretty easy to understand. Let's just do that for now, and I'll I'll cut this, and we'll put it into G for gravity. G gravity grav. Right about here. Okay, gravity hill is in, done, or gravity spot. Uh, the glass desert idea was a really nice, nice one. 
Uh, a flow town is a thing. It develops over a swamp and in some areas. Okay, flow town. Um, I, f I, I get the feeling we are going to hit the um, the 100 mark pretty shortly, people, and it's just about me tidying it all up then. Float on, float on. All right, I've marked that down. I'll come back to that. Okay. Uh, scrolling, 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 scrolling. So we're getting there. Um, somebody asked for a giant beanstalk, so I uh, I put in the giant beanstalk. <laughs> it seemed fine to me as an idea. Okay, so here we go. Let's say glass desert. Kind of curious about the glass desert. Glass desert. Oh, there is a glass desert. There are glass deserts. I was pretty sure there were, but... Where is the glass? What happens in a glass desert? Define a glass desert. Lumps of glass formed by lightning. I thought it was lightning. Um, subclasses that formed during a nuclear... Oh, uh, yeah, it can also, yeah, during nuclear blast as well in a desert. Uh, okay, so we're... We're going to do this. Um, let's let's do that. Let's go here. Well, that didn't help. They tell us where they are. So let's go uh, copy this. Desert glass, glass desert. With giant sand structure, um, 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 giant glass structures create. Okay, this is interesting too. Okay, that's that's fine. We're going to get it. Glass desert. Which is a very interesting idea. So let's let's definitely have something. And let's grab this bit. Okay. So a barren wasteland covered in lumps of glass formed by lightning and nuclear explosions. And nuclear explosions. And who would have thought that that was not a fantastic fantasy concept? It's a real thing, right? So I say, you know, you look for the fantastical and the fantastic and the exotic, and all you need to do is look at real life, and you've, you've got it pretty much right there. So we're very close to being done, people. Look at this. That's not bad. So we're going to cut this and put it under glass desert. Glass. Glacier. And we'll put it right here. There we go. Glass desert. Did somebody write something else in here? The in Chile, a glass desert thought to be a comet strike. Well, I'm not surprised. Okay, so formed by lightning. Uh, a meteor, meteor strikes and nuclear explosions. So anything that creates great heat and those things would do it, right? So, okay, so we've got our glass desert down. Sinkhole. Did we not have sinkhole? I thought we had sinkhole in. Oh, I'll check. Uh, a pothole. They are different. <laughs> a pot. I don't even want to think about potholes. There are so many potholes on my way to work now. My car has almost been destroyed a number of times. Just the, the, the wheel bearings and the, the shocks just getting smashed to snot because the 
They're just not fixing the huge holes. They're like the size of a freaking canyon. Um, sinkhole. We do have sinkhole. So you, so if you were worried about that, we, we've got sinkhole. Don't worry. It's it's in there. So glass desert is done. Now, uh, we we are we are going to type in another one somebody had suggested here, and we'll see if we get um, what we need. Somebody had said crystalline tree. And there's also here mangrove root maze. I'm kind of curious about this tree idea though. Um, crystalline. Uh, tree. Crystal trees are made up of natural crystals that shine with their natural... Are you kidding me? Is this a real thing? Is this a naturally or are they created by, by man? That looks like it's created by man. It's a decorative mini tree. What is the meaning of the crystal tree? But even if it was not a real thing, we could make a natural formation that's, for a fantasy world, that is a crystalline tree. Um... They constantly have healing properties. Okay, so this is something that people make up. Crystalline tree. We can have a crystalline forest. We've got a petrified forest. We don't have a, a cloud sponge. As this substance connects with the clouds and it turns the clouds into solid making flowing substances. Um, cloud sponge. I'm making a note of that one. So we're, we're, we're now venturing into making our own environmental stuff. As a natural tree, I, I think I think there's I think there's a place to add it. I really do. Um, Let us create one. Let us create the crystal, um, the, the crystal forest or the crystal tree. Um, where are we? We've got the crystal caves. Let's go crystalline forest and drop this in. A stand of trees made up of natural crystals that shine, that shine during daylight how does that say a stand of trees made up made of natural crystals that shine during the daylight shine during daylight that's our crystalline forest done <laughs> okay all right you have your luck my lag is showing it's all right it's all cool uh, so we've we've got that one nailed down. Um, so where are we now amongst this? Well, now we now we have some choices. We can actually dump some stuff because we've. I oh know we don't. No, we've got a hundred now. So we just need to. I need to finish some of these and fill in the gaps. Get rid of the question marks. And um, she's she's all but a. Uh, 
like gemstones, like gemstones. <laughs> yeah, 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 quite possibly. Okay. I wonder if it's a thing. What is a mushroom tree? Is there such a thing as a mushroom tree? Two ways. Mushroom tree seed can be purchased. Locked. What? Stardew Valley. Is this a video game? Is there a mushroom tree? Growing mushroom trees. Oak. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Ah. Okay. So there's mushrooms that grow on trees, and they call it a, a mushroom farm and or a mushroom tree. Ah. Aha. Uh -huh. Now it's starting to um, make sense. Okay, so let's... Um, okay. Um, let's go... Um, enormous. Enormous. Mushrooms and fungus. 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 That's not right. Fun. Gus. That looks wrong. Fungus. Um, form a stand. Grove. Let's see, let's go here. Okay, that's better. Enormous, enormous, multi, let's do this, multicolored mushrooms and fungus form a grove. There we go. Let's take this. This is our mushroom forest. It's very Super Mario, I believe. Um, mushroom. 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 M M M M M. Mush. Room. Right about there. Okay, good. Yes, getting my mushrooms on. <laughs> Will often um, um, grow from dead trees. Yes, yes, yes. We got one hundred done. Yes, I just need to fill in the the, uh, the details on it, and she's a she's a she's a thing now. So while I'm doing that, people, those of you who are still here, hashtag, uh, what is the next? Um, location tool that gets made like let me know so one of the things um, we could certainly do is we could uh, I could compile all the different rooms you find or locations you find in a castle depending on the size and give a description of what their purpose are is or what they look like so we could do that. We could do um, we could do something around, uh, say, a dock, like you know. Uh, we could do something around um, possibly ships or something around, say, uh, different city locations. Although I feel like that might not be necessary, considering. I believe that there is one already in the Pathfinder book here. Um, we could do something around different planes of existence, maybe that would be possible. Uh, we could do an urban sort of city one. Um, we could do something around, 
What else is there? Uh, we, I suppose we could go back to towns if we really wanted to, but I don't think we necessarily have to do that. Uh, maybe just exotic rooms, uh, dungeon rooms, types of dungeons. So I suppose what you could turn into a dungeon. Um, that we could do something like that. So there's, yeah, have a think about it. Can we list occupations in a city? We could probably do that. Um, we could probably make a list of occupations in a city. That's that's probably very doable. That's not so much. I mean, that's not really location based. And we will we'll be wrapping back round to doing NPCs. I think something like that, like occupations for NPCs. So really, what you're wanting there, derp, is occupations for for uh, for NPCs, right? And I think that's what you're talking about there. Hometown, bog, bad lair. Um, need a list of what has been made. Ha has been made castles, towns, wizard towers, ancient ruins. Yes, so Fred, you're right. So, cons you know, manufactured structures. So just having a list of manufactured structures might be a good way of going about this as well. Things that you would find within the wilderness as you're exploring. And so you're saying castles, uh, wizard towers, ancient ruins. So yeah, I suppose that's possible too. Have a have a think. The Tartarus locations. Oh my gosh! Right. Um, so do to give you an idea. I have every intentions of doing NPC occupations. It it's it's a tool that we'll build when I do NPCs again for sure. It's going to happen. Why has it not happened yet? It's because we've been building motivations for villains. It just seemed to have the top priority at, at present. Places in a teleportation network. Okay. All right. So there's a lot of ideas. Keep throwing your ideas out there. And I will work on finishing this little sucker. So that I can put up onto Patreon at the end of the week. Okay. Planes. Let me define planes. Should be relatively easy. Right? It shouldn't be hard. A large area of flat land with few trees. Really? That's, that's planes. Okay. That is that's that's planes. There you go. Not hard to describe that one. Let's um let's just take this bit out here. And just remove the the yellow. Okay, so that's all done. Done all that. That's all correct. That's all correct. That's all correct. Okay, stream. So a stream, now why did I not have that, why did I have a question mark beside stream? I don't understand. There'll be a reason for sure. A small narrow river. A continuous flow of liquid or air or gas. Oh, okay. Running or flying a continuous current in a specific, okay, all right. Data, okay. All right, so that is a, a a small narrow water course that flows flows uh, now it flows over or under ground over land. Or underground so one of the things we we have discussed before is that you can have rivers and streams that are underground and over land so let me make let's make sure i include that as well <laughs> a dog uh wouldn't like planes no trees exactly planes uh kansas one big flat flat pancake <laughs> city names um okay city names interesting I am I am paying attention, people. I am paying attention. I am looking at what you're writing down. All right. So, uh, moving this down, moving this down. Make sure I've got all the bits and pieces where they need to be. 
tundra, a type of bio biome where tree growth is hindered by frigid temperatures and short growing um, seasons. Now, is that really what I wanted? Is that really what it is? Tundra. Tundra. Okay. Permanently frozen layer of um, of the Earth's surface. Tundra. Cold. Treeless region. Arctic. Okay. All right. So let's have a look here. So it sounds to me like there aren't trees. So Tundra. So treeless. Tundra vegetation is composed of dwarf scrubs, um, sedge, gigs, moss, mold, little lichen. Okay, all right, I see. Uh, oh. Well, so that's a bit better. That's a better breakdown of what a tundra is there. Dwarf scrubs, sigmas and moss and lichens. Scattered tree growth in some tundra regions. Okay, so it's not treeless, but it can be. Okay, so this is a little bit different, isn't it? Not quite what I was after. Anyway, let's just get rid of this. Treeless wasteland with grasses. Let's um Uh, let's do that and if I go here paste um, So a cold frozen a cold frozen region with dwarf scrubs, sedges, grasses, moss and lichens. Um, lichen. with mosses, lichens, and, and, and few or no trees. Okay. I think that's what we needed to have there because we need to describe it rather than say what it is, don't we? So we, we've described it and it's it's there. Okay, so there's our tundra done. There could be fantasy trees that do, do grow there. Yes, they can, but we're not doing that for the um, dungeon master or game master. They can decide on that. We're just giving them what they, these things are. And the Widowmaker, I think this is all done. So we're up to 90, which means there's just the last few to sort out. Why, why is this doing this? Meteor strikes. That's because I haven't spelled it correctly. That's why. Uh -huh. um, all right, so that's that and that. Okay, that's good. Let's go down, down, down. Down, 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 typically. Okay, so this is, there's a space here. And we don't want to have a space there. We want to have this all linked. And I think it is now. 
it's, it is now up to there. Cutback bank, the outside bank of, of a curve in a water channel stream, water channel, channel, channel which is continually undergoing erosion. Uh, okay. Did we have that? I'm just thinking, just sorry, I'm just thinking in terms of, I'm sure we did. Um, but maybe I left it out. Did I leave out cliff? Did I leave out cliff face? Like something as simple as a cliff face. Did I leave that one out? How does one leave out cliff face? Does, does one just leave it out because they forgot that they actually exist or that I wrote down something else somewhere else? Like here. Cut cut bank define cut bank let's find out what it needs to be called cut bank it is a cut bank okay so it is referred to as a cut um, a river cut cliff but there's cliff as well we haven't included cliff why don't we include cliff so let's let's trim this down and um, I'm going to add in cliff because we should have cliff here we don't have cliff how did that happen made a mistake here somewhere along the line was not thinking <laughs> um, so cut back bank cut bank cut okay so we cut that and put it into cut bank under C cut 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 bank uh see see it should be around about here cut bank okay so we've got the cut bank we need to put in cliff and i think cliff starts right about there does it not cliff can't believe we managed to miss cliff of anything um we've been dealing with so much of this cliff define cliff a steep rock face especially at the edge of the sea okay so we're going to do this a steep rock face especially at the edge of of the sea or on the side of a mountain there we go. There's the cliff. Let's put the cliff in. And how are we doing for time? Okay, so um, I am running out of time, but we're almost there. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Don't need that anymore. Um, beanstalk, a large bean plant reaching up into the sky. We will include the beanstalk, people. Very fantasy-like. We will include the beanstalk. Uh, cut giant beanstalk. Giant. I, 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 giant, giant bean, bean, giant bean. There we go. Paste. There we go. It's in. And scrolling, scrolling. Cloud sponge. Somebody has said cloud sponge. Oh, it's a sea sponge. It's a type of cloud sponge. Define cloud. Ah, I see. But you had made something up with cloud sponge, had you not? I remember you had, um, which was clever. Okay, floating clouds, mythical location. Um, um, let's let's use mythical. Okay, not mythical. We're not saying mythical. It is a magical 
land mass. that forms in the sky. A cloud sponge. That's what we were after, eh? Correct? Pretty sure it was. Cloud. Cut for cloud. Cloud. Right about there. All right, we just made up some bullshit. There we go. <laughs> Adding a bit of bullshit in there. Um, next, on here. Um, okay. Now, what is aim mort? I'm pretty sure tiny piece or substance a speck moat no it's not in that uh, we'll come back to that in a second I'm thinking about this how do I how do I word it now pink and white terraces Uh. Okay, so let's see. So, pink and white terraces. This is something in New Zealand, and, and I, I have a thing for the pink and white terraces, so um, I'm including it. Um, Copy and let's do that. Format. Um, a series of layered geothermal springs containing a cocktail of silica. Silica. Deposits. So, I think that's the best description of it. Okay, cut. Pink, 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 pink. I, L, it's be uh, it'd be right in here, wouldn't it? That's that one. Cool. We've got that one down. And I believe. I think, I think this is going to be uh, the last one. I'm just checking. I just want to make sure that I have not left it out. Did I leave it out? No, it's there. It's good. 
Do we prefer the word floating land or floating island? I feel like it's got to be one or the other. We're going to call it one or the other. Is it going to be called floating land, a chunk of rock, dirt, and grass that floats in mid-air, defying gravity? Do we call this floating land or floating island? I think floating island is better myself. But how do you how do you feel about us calling it that? Like, does it does it appeal to you? Not really appeal to you? Because this is the last one, people. This is this is it. This is this is where this list will finally be complete. Like we have covered every sodding thing I, we can possibly think of, um, and it, it's going to come down to this one thing here, which is kind of amazing, if you ask me. Um, very very interesting, very interesting. Floating islands, Fred, you sold me. That's what I was thinking, dude. I was thinking floating island is the better name. Let's do that. Cut it. Paste it. Put it in the right place. That should give you every single thing you would ever need to do this, people. If. If, if, if float, float, I, if float, forest, float. I think it's there. Here we go. There it is. And it is done. Which means those of you who are patrons will be getting uh, another annoying email at the end of the week. <laughs> Because there's more to come. Um, all right, so we've we've done it, and so you add you use an adjective at the beginning, and then you start with one of these words. You've got a description, so you know what it is. It's it's there. Well, 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 that worked out nicely, did it not? I think that worked out quite well. I'm quite pleased. We have succeeded, achieved what we were after. Um, I have got to go, but. Tomorrow, what is happening tomorrow? Tomorrow, I'm going to be going over skeleton combat tactics. So how you go about using your skeletons. Doesn't really matter what game, play, um, what game system you're using, frankly. I don't think it's going to matter in the slightest what game system you're using in terms of the advice that I am going to offer. So don't worry about that sort of thing. Um, and then, yes, uh, we've got, um, I think it's the Fighter Pathfinder 2nd Edition character building after that, the day after, and then after that, that it's second, uh, is it Dungeons & Dragons 4E Basic Combat, I believe it is. And then after the Basic Combat, uh, end of the week, we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to fix the monk. I'm going to fix the 5E monk. Screw it. I'm not waiting for Wizards of the Coast to get their act together. That isn't happening. So yes, that's what I'm thinking. Um, do you make your own maps for RPG or role-playing game locations? Yes, 68% of you do. No, 21%. Hopefully there'll be more of you doing that now. Sometimes 11%. So, good. Well, thank you for hanging out with me. I do appreciate it. We have got a lot done in a, uh, in a frankly, a short space of time. It actually takes a while to do these sorts of things. But we've definitely got there. And of course, I will be back next week to do more Game Master preparation, same day, same time. Anyway, thank you to all of my patrons. Thank you to all of the uh, people who've been watching today, everybody who's been giving the comments, um, helping me fill out these uh, the, this list. Those of you who have been um, just watching or filling in the poll, thank you for doing so. I do appreciate it. It's good to have that interaction. And... Um, Yes, we will be returning in about two months to start working on a new tool for location. Something that uh, I will probably throw into a poll and see how people feel about things. I can see a few ideas you've put forward, so I'll certainly consider that. Uh, so yeah, wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee early morning, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.